From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! As 2010 draws to a close, what is the role of the United States in the world today? From the ongoing wars in Afghanistan and Iraq to the cuts in social spending here at home, where is there emerging hope for change around the world? We spend the hour with award-winning investigative journalist and activist Alan Nairn. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A series of U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan have killed at least 33 people over the past two days. On Tuesday, drones struck a pair of sites in North Waziristan, killing at least 15 people. A separate attack on Monday killed 18 in the region. The U.S. has now carried out at least 116 drone attacks this year, more than double the amount from last year. In news from Africa, a delegation of heads of state from Benin, Sierra Leone and Cape Verde have failed to persuade incumbent Ivory Coast President Laurent Gbagbo to leave office following last month's election. The African leaders warned Gbagbo to cede power to rival Alsani Ouattara or face regional military action. Ouattara has been widely recognized as the winner of the election, but Gbagbo claims the vote was rigged. Chief Palestinian negotiator Saab Arakat said today the Palestinians will ask the United Nations Security Council in January to recognize an independent Palestinian state. Three Latin American countries, Brazil, Argentina and Bolivia, have already recognized an independent Palestinian state. Meanwhile, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas is traveling to Brazil today to lay the symbolic foundation stone of a Palestinian embassy in Brasilia. On Saturday, Abbas is due to attend the inauguration of Brazil's new president, Dilma Rousseff. In Honduras, gunmen shot and killed a radio journalist named Henry Sosa on Monday. Sosa became the tenth journalist killed this year in Honduras, making Honduras the most dangerous place for journalists on a per capita basis. Meanwhile, the Swiss-based press emblem campaign is reporting at least 106 journalists were killed overall in 2010, 14 journalists were killed in both Mexico and Pakistan, eight journalists were killed in Iraq, six in the Philippines, five Five in Russia, four in Colombia, Brazil and Nigeria. The Press Emblem campaign now considers Latin America to be the most dangerous place for journalists due to the high death tolls in Mexico and Honduras. Meanwhile, it's been a year since two French journalists were taken hostage in Afghanistan. Vigils were held across France today, calling for the release of Erge Jasker and Stéphane Topanier. Images of the two journalists were projected onto the Arc de Triomphe monument in Paris. Jean-François Julliard of Reporters Without Borders criticized the French government, saying that more could have been done to secure the journalists' release. We are very criti critical against the French government because uh, uh, during the first weeks of their detention, uh, the French authorities and Nicolas Sarkozy himself and, and his deputy were very uh, critics against the two journalists, Hervé and, and Stéphane, saying they, they took too many risks. So we have the feeling it was not uh, a priority for the French authorities to secure their release. And this is the reason why we are so angry today and why the family of, of uh, the two stages uh, is so angry uh, as well. A new study by the Economic Policy Institute has found that U.S.-based companies created more jobs overseas this year than they did inside the United States. 1.4 million jobs were created overseas versus less than 1 million in the United States. At the firm DuPont, the number of U.S. employees has shrunk by 9 percent since 2005, while its workforce grew by 54 percent in Asia-Pacific countries. At Caterpillar, more than half of the 15,000 thousand people hired this year were outside the United States. Meanwhile, the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics has announced it's changing how it records unemployment data figures because of what it calls an unprecedented rise in long-term unemployment. Beginning on Saturday, the federal government will raise the upper limit on how long someone can be listed as having been jobless from two years to five years. Economists say the chance could help them better measure the severity of the nation's economic crisis. 
In other economic news, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation has announced that 157 banks failed this year, the highest total since 1992, during the savings and loans crisis. About half of the bank failures involve banks headquartered in four states, California, Florida, Georgia and Illinois. An international human rights group has revealed the Obama administration has refused to help the Polish government investigate claims that the CIA ran a secret black site prison inside Poland. Polish prosecutors launched a probe in August 2008, but U.S. authorities have refused to cooperate, claiming they consider the matter closed. Flight records show that seven CIA planes landed in 2002 and 2003 at Zemani, a Polish military base in northeast Poland. Meanwhile, WikiLeaks has released secret U.S. diplomatic cables that show the U.S. government also refused to help the United Arab Emirates investigate the assassination of a Hamas military commander in Dubai last January. Dubai officials have long suspected Israeli intelligence agency Mossad was behind the killing of Ahmoud al-Mabou. The leaked cables show that the U.S. rejected a formal request from UAE government to provide credit card information about the suspects in the killing. The suspected assassins were using credit cards issued by the Iowa-based Metabank. In New Orleans, eight young people were killed in a fire on Tuesday while squatting in an abandoned building in the Upper Ninth Ward. It was the deadliest fire in New Orleans in over 35 years. Most of the dead were artists, welders or musicians in their late teens and early 20s. Fire officials said the squatters were burning trash in a large barrel inside the building in an effort to keep warm on what was one of the coldest nights of the year. Charles Parent is the superintendent of the New Orleans Fire Department. When the firefighters got to the actual building itself, it was engulfed in flames and had already partially collapsed. Uh, they made the best effort they possibly could, and actually they knocked the fire down within 33 minutes. Uh, it was a tremendous stop, but when they went into the interior of the building, that's when we discovered some of the victims. We also interviewed two people that escaped the fire before they said they were using a barrel with wood and trash, trying to stay warm. So many of the fire victims were overcome by carbon monoxide before the actual fire itself. The incoming chair of the House Energy and Commerce Committee is threatening to derail the Environmental Protection Agency's plan to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. Republican Congressman Fred Upton of Michigan is describing the EPA's plan as a, quote, unconstitutional power grab that will kill millions of jobs. Upton made the threat in an op-ed piece in The Wall Street Journal, co-written by Tim Phillips. Phillips is a global warming denier and president of Americans for Prosperity, an organization found founded by billionaire David Koch. Here in New York, Mayor Mike Bloomberg is coming under intense criticism for the city's failure to clear snow from sections of the city following this week's blizzard. As of Tuesday, some 250 city buses and scores of ambulances remained stranded in city streets because roads hadn't been plowed. Union officials blamed the slow snow removal problem on Bloomberg's decision to slash the size of the sanitation department by roughly 400 workers. And in news from Europe, an Italian anarchist group is claiming responsibility for a letter bomb sent to the Greek embassy in Rome. The informal anarchist federation also claimed responsibility for two letter bombs that exploded at the Swiss and Chilean embassies in Rome last week, seriously injuring two people. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.